welcome to Dr. Potana's teaching. Today's topic is on fear and worry. Today, the entire globe is facing through a lot of terrific problems. Particularly, people are so much anxious. There's a lot of fear and worry in the hearts of everyone. The respective of religion, culture, and the context, people are living under fear. Fear in the home and fear in the office. Fear and worry are like a brother and sister. They both have internal relationship. They both come as couple. Fear and worry. Let's look at what is worry how do you define worry worry is an over anxious concern regarding the future of our things that keeps a person from fulfilling current responsibilities worry is an over anxious concern concern is always good but over anxious concern creates tension why this over anxious concern regarding the future are things that keeps a person from fulfilling current responsibilities. But today, the current responsibilities, like family responsibilities, job responsibilities, and all these responsibilities will, be, will suppress you. Keeps a person from fulfilling all these responsibilities. Worry is dangerous. Worry is a sin of continual dwelling on and preoccupation with some fear, usually associated with the future. Mostly, it is associated with the future. Thinking about the future, thinking about visions, dreams, and ambitions, you get tensed of fulfilling all of them. What is should not be confused with diligent care and concern. Let me say it again. What is should not be confused with the diligent care and concern. We all need to have a diligent care and concern for our family and for our future. We need to plan for our future and we should be concerned of our future. But what I talk about the worry is different than that concern. This is beyond that concern. Worry is not careful planning for the future which considers God's sovereignty. Worry is not a careful planning of the future. Concern can change categories and become worry. You have some concerns. These concern, concerns can change categories. Some of the categories change the categories and they become worry. Often these concerns lead to worry. You have a concern of your family, concern for your future growth and concern, concern, concern. The over concern of particular thing lead you to worry. Thoughts focused on changing the future. And today, in this corona context, thoughts focused on changing the future. People plan something for the future. All the future ambitions, plannings, and dreams, all of them have been shattered, you know, piece by piece. These changing situations to the future make us worry. Thoughts are unproductive and unfruitful. When worry gets into our brain and into our now system, we become unproductive and unfruitful in our day-to-day -day activities. You know, worry is very dangerous. It's a silent killer. Silently, it kills our potentiality and the energy. It controls you. You know, the worry controls your thought pattern, your behavioral patterns, and your activities. As a result, you cannot function well. Neglects other responsibilities. You know, 
when your productivity levels are low, you neglect other responsibilities and you become ineffective. Lost hope or stop functioning. You lose your hope. When you lose your hope, you become unproductive and you struggle to manage things and you struggle to manage your functional life of the day-to-day -day activities. Let me say it again. Over concern on some of the things lead you to worry and worry controls you. God is not in an equation. God not in focus. So when you go through this kind of worry, you don't keep God in that equation. And God is not the focus. Worry is the focus. Instead of focusing on God and spirituality all the time, 24 by 7, you try to think about that particular problem, how to solve, and you wrestle with that issue. You wrestle with the worry. Worry is a monster. God is not being trusted. When you go through this worry, you stop trusting God. God becomes small and worry becomes so big. And then God doesn't make sense to you. And God doesn't uh, make any meaning to that individual who go through that worry. So worry is very dangerous. It takes away God from the sin. That's the reason Bible clearly says worry is sinful. Worry is sinful. Sin comes in different forms. Worry is in another form of sin. Jesus forbids worry in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 19 to 34. It says, Do not worry. He forbids. As God of the heaven forbid it, forbid it Adam and Eve to eat that fruit. In the same way, Jesus forbids worry. Do not worry. Paul commands believers to not worry. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Then the question is, how do you deal with this worry? Here is, the, here is uh, the crux of the topic. Let's come. How do we deal it? It is the problem of you and it is the problem of mine. And it is the problem of the globe. Irrespective of the religion, culture and the context. And in the irrespective of the age, even the young and old, male and female, the aged and the little children, everybody is the victim of this worry. And how do we deal with this? Let's come on. Worry amounts to idolatry. God has been replaced by worry. And now instead of trusting God, we replace with worry. That's the reason it is an idolatry, equal to idolatry. That's the reason we need to talk about it and we need to deal this with this issue. Idolatry means worshipping someone or something other than God. Romans, letter to Romans chapter 1 verse 25 talk about it. Idolatry means worshipping someone or something rather than God is called idolatry. So when you replace worship in the place of God, we are in idolatry. So, how do we deal with it? Worry expresses the idolatry of the heart. You know, the worry expresses the idolatry of the heart. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 19 to 21 we see particularly the things we worry about reveal our idols sometimes young people worry about their marriage that become an idol whether they get exact life partner they have been fantasizing and for some their job can become an idol worrying about a fantasized type of job that they have been imagining Things we worry about reveal our idols. The solution is repentance. Since no one can serve two masters, Jesus clearly says, no one can serve two masters. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, verse 24. 
And even in Exodus 20, 3 to 6, Bible clearly says, none of us can serve two masters. Only either we serve the only master, Lord Jesus Christ, or you can serve any other idol. Of your fantasized thing that you're expecting. Since no one can serve masters, the solution is repentance. You need to repent and turn to God. There is a hope in God. The Lord Jesus deals with this. How to deal with worry? Only repenting and turning to God. Worry amounts to unbelief, not trusting God. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6, 25 to 34, we read, worry amounts to unbelief, not trusting God. God becomes meaningless when you entertain this worry. And only your worry becomes so big and uh, God becomes very small. So how do we deal with this? Worry is a totally unproductive, useless activity. At this gospel chapter 6 verse 27, Jesus clearly says it is a totally unproductive and useless activity. You know, it is not a useful activity. Therefore, we don't need to entertain the worry in our brains. Worry warriors are people of little faith. You know, Hebrews Gospel chapter 11 talked about the warriors. The little faith, like a mustard seed faith in your brain starts growing and it pulls away the worry that is there in you. I can tell you a lot of examples from, from my own life. With look, two little children, without having anything in the hands, I went to Bangalore for my PhD work with the University of Mysore as well as with SIAX. Little faith, I had the little faith that God will provide my needs. Every year I had to pay two lakhs rupees. And uh, apart from that, another lot of money for university fee. And I don't know where it gone. I never begged around, I never went around to beg money from people. But God provides. When we have a mustard seed of faith, when we trust God, we continue to enjoy the provision of God. If we continue to worry, we become unproductive. We cannot produce the quality work that God expects. But God helps us. And I can tell you from my example. Of course, as a human being, I had to worry for some times, but I trusted God for seven years almost. Working hard, doing some part-time jobs, depending on God without entertaining that gloomy and worry situation, trusted God. And I was able to do a quality research and get my PhD award with the University of Mysore. No, worry, warriors are people of little faith. You can be a warrior today. You can conquer this corona context. Nothing can stop you. No, nothing can stop you. Nothing can take you away from God. I am a traveler. I cannot survive without traveling and preaching. I'm an evangelist, basically. Traveling, teaching, preaching. But now lockdown, I cannot come out of my home. But nothing can stop me from preaching. Either people are there or not, I started preaching to my screen. Amazing. Dozens of people started coming and we, we have a regular teaching, a qualitative teaching on Zoom as well as on Facebook. And people started confessing and appreciating that the Lord has been touching their lives. Either I am at home or outside, my job is to touch the people of God with the word of God. And you know, nothing can stop you. You don't need to worry. Worry should be buried. And you should raise again. And you should use every opportunity to dispel the darkness and go forward for the expansion of God's kingdom. Worry, warriors don't see God's provision, care, knowledge, and faithfulness. Warriors, not warriors, warriors. The people who continue to worry cannot see God's provision, care, knowledge, and faithfulness. They, all the time they see only disbelief, 
suspension, fear, and anxiety. If you continue to worry, you cannot see God's provision. The people who continue to live in worry focus too much on the mites of the future. Mites of the future such that they become irresponsible in the present. They always look at the future. They don't see what to do in the present. I know one young boy knocked my door two, I think three years ago. And he has been visualizing. He wants to become a big movie star gloomy, depressed, living in depression for one year. He's not getting any opportunities and not doing any work. The only son in the home come from a rich family, but doing nothing. He studied engineering, but doing nothing, no job, simply wasting his time and having a fantasy of becoming a star in the future. Those who continue to worry, they live such kind of life. They always having a kind of imagination and fantasy of the future that they want to become such a star. They want to become like a Billy Graham of the evangelist or somebody so great, but doing nothing at the present. You know, my friends, you can conquer worry when you do something at the present. An idle mind is a devil's workshop. You cannot be silent. You cannot waste your time. You should continue to do. When you are busy in doing something, you overcome the worry. The solution is to trust God and keep his kingdom by honoring him. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 6 again, verse 33, talk about it. How to deal with worry? Jesus clearly said, the solution is to trust God, even in this corona context, when you don't have anything. I tell you this example. This young boy, came in my group and Zoom. I know that he's a problematic fellow. I thought he changed. He said, I am, I am now a renewed man. I trusted him and I asked him to help me. Instead of listening to my message, he started conversation with the other participants in the group, getting their phone numbers, getting their personal details. And by the end of one hour's teaching, he's making some relationship. I'm not able to observe this. It went on for uh, three, four weeks. And then with the relationship, he, st he started asking everybody to contribute some money, giving all the false information. Some people might have given and one or two had doubt and they called me and they said, this is what happening. This guy, we never knew him, but he sh started sh sharing all these things. Uh, what can we do? And then I call his mentor who gave him some opportunities for ministry. And he said, oh, I'm very sorry. He has that kind of nature. So why he's, he's worried so much about his life and he's not trusting God. Instead of trusting God, he wants to depend on his own. You know, his own schemes of raising funds. Of course, fundraising is biblical. I'm not critical of it, but there is a way to do it. You need to maintain that relationship. So you need to trust God. The solution is to trust God and seek his kingdom by honoring him. When you honor God, this worry will be dispelled from you and you become a warrior. You continue to enjoy the presence of God. Now we are dealing about the, we're dealing with the worry. Worry needs to be replaced with righteous activities. Now, when you continue to worry and depressed, gloomy, you can't do anything. You need to replace with some righteous activities. Do something. When you don't have anything in your hand, give to someone. The prophet asked this old woman who was collecting sticks to cook the last meal and die. The prophet said, give me a bread. Cook a bread for me and bring it. She said, I don't have anything. But she trusted. And she started doing the righteous activity of providing food to the prophet in her 
poverty. You know, amazing. God supplied all her needs to survive and sustain in that pandemic situation. And today the same. We need to do righteous activities to get out of this worry. Replace worry with prayer and thankfulness. You need to replace prayer and thankfulness. So when you don't have anything, thank God. Lord, thank you for everything. When this little boy brought his mother's Mother might have given little food, five loaves and two fish. He gave to Jesus. Jesus gave thanks to the heavenly father as he started distributing to multitudes. More than 5,000 people could eat that food that was given thanksgiving. Since we have some time to start our actual lecture, I'm dealing with this worry. Replace worry with prayer and thankfulness. Replace worry with thinking on things that are true. The devil is the accuser. He is the liar. All the time, 24 by 7, the devil gives lies. He speaks lies. What we need to do? We need to tell him that you believe the truth. Jesus said, if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. What is truth? You trust in God in your difficult situations. God will provide your need. You don't need to go around and spoil your testimony. Replace worry with thinking on things that are true, not on false. Replace worry with righteous behavior. Philippians chapter 4 verse 9. With righteous behavior. Note the progression of your life and uh, right praying. Right praying, not wrong prayer. There is a right prayer and wrong prayer. Right prayer leads to right thinking. When your prayer is right, you know what to ask and what not to ask. That leads to right thinking. So the right thinking is essential to win the worry. The right thinking leads to right action. See the logic here. Right praying leads to right thinking and right thinking leads you to right actions. So now, as we are discussing about dealing with worry, the focus of it all, know that God is near. You know that God is near. He is with you. He deals with you and he continues to help you, help you. And God always walks with you and he never leaves you, nor forsakes you because God is with you. You need to have this theology of immanence of God. Jesus is with us. Jesus, the name itself is God is with us. The result. The peace of God will guard you. When you have this consciousness of God's presence with you, and the peace of God will guard you, protect you. And peace of God will continue to protect you. The right fear versus sinful fear. We need to have fear, but there is a right fear and sinful fear. What is the right fear? When you have some fear, you try to act on it and you try to solve the problem. But if you continue to allow that fear to conquer you, that becomes sinful. Fears are right. Sometimes it is good to have fear, but you should not have a wrong fear, the fear of God. For example, you need to have a fear of God, which is right. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And uh, fear of danger, when you know, if I touch this electricity, I will get shocked. That fear takes you away. You may help you to help you helps you to maintain some distance. So fears that are sinful. Let me see. Fear of man instead of God is sinful, and fear of things temporal rather than eternal. Fear of temporal rather than eternal. And fear of things we cannot change. No, my friends, we cannot change sometimes. Only God can change. We should depend on God 
and God will change. Dealing with sinful fear. How are we going to deal, replace sinful fear with the fear of the Lord? What we need to do, we need to replace. In other words, in mathematics, they call it a substitution. You substitute God's fear in the place of sinful fear and identify the lust or idol behind the fear. Every fear will have these two. The lust or the idol behind that. Identify what is it. Replace sinful fear with love because God is a God of love. He helps us. And let me conclude because my time is up to start the other meeting. So deal with guilt biblically. Meditate on helpful scripture verses to deal with fear. May God help you and continue to give you victory over the fears that you have today because every human being now on the planet of earth has fears one way or other way. And we need to conquer them by the power of the Lord. Otherwise, they will eat away your joy and peace. Let me pray and conclude. Father, I thank you for these of my friends. Bless them, encourage them, motivate them, and let them continue to be in your vineyard to conquer the fear that comes from the evil one. You are a God of love, and you are a God who gives courage and confidence to face challenges in life. But the fear comes from the evil. And I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. I pray that all of these of my friends may continue to enjoy peace and grace that comes from the Lord Jesus. In Jesus' precious name I pray. Amen. Thank you, friends. Have a blessed day. But we are continuing another class with the Ezekiel. Part 2. Yesterday evening we had Ezekiel. Every evening, 7 to 7.45 in the time, we have this uh, Bible characters we are studying. Since I had a little free time, I started recording this. And some of you join. Praise God for that. If you have a time, you can join after a few minutes in the live. Let me set, up, set my computer for that class. Okay. Friends, uh, thanks for coming. A lot of other friends are joining, but there is some problem, it seems, today. Uh, I want to end and come back again so that others also may join. Please excuse me. I'm ending the meeting. Uh, I'm pressing the button, end meeting. I'll come back again. Please excuse me and join back again so that others also will come back.